It is September 3rd, 2022, and I'm at Simons Valley Creekside Mall, and Stony Trail is just behind me, the intersection of uh, Beddington Trail and Stony Trail. Uh, this is right where it changes to Simons Valley, so this mall right here is kind of a showcase site for me because of all the reaches along West Nose Creek, this is probably the longest, straightest reach. And if you're doing some before and after video and photography, it's good to have a good full complement of stream channel to uh, show your comparisons on and uh, I did an old video of this site 2016 I think that was a, a year after I I planted in here this was 2015 planting and it was planted all downstream and there were some existing willows a patch or two here and there but all of the ones growing along the creek were planted and I'm gonna walk right down to the edge I've got a thermometer in there I'm taking water temperature today as well because I wanted to do a bit of a comparison with Big Hill Creek because I took a temperature there a few days ago and it was uh, 61 Fahrenheit I believe I've got it written down, but we'll go down and have a look here. I've got my thermometer in the creek. It's been there for some time now. And, uh, ooh, slightly under 60 Fahrenheit. If I was to get perpendicular to that thermometer, I think it would be right on the money at 60 Fahrenheit. Anyway, that's good for trout, and we just got over a stream closure. It was uh, opened back up province-wide on the 31st of August, so that's only a few days ago. Uh, those willows are looking really good, and they're already starting to provide some great cover habitat, and that was the uh, primary goal was to create fish habitat and of course there's also the uh, benefits of having healthy riparian growth along the stream channel but these are the willows that I videoed in uh, 2016 and you can see that they're all growing in real thick along here so the recovery is going very, very well. Where I stopped planting in 2015, I continued on in 2016. And I will go up there and show you. The willows are a little smaller and you can see the, the size and compare them. Just one year's difference in growth. So I'll head up there right now. Okay, this is the uh, top end area of where I finished off in 2015 and you can see the height of the willows is substantial. Also, uh, what we have, this mother plant right here is a uh, Salix exiga. I like to call them narrow leaf willows or sandbar willows there's one there and then there's one on the other side and I've mentioned previous times that it is a colonial colony that forms off of the mother plant and I'm going to give you an example sucker roots have spread out and all of this that's a willow right whoops that's a willow right there these are all narrow leaf willow 
narrow leaf willow. See how it's spreading out? And that is really good because uh, that provides tremendous stability. And uh, the Salix exaga is a good recruitment plant for the first round of planting in some areas because it's a nitrogen fixer. So uh, eventually the other varieties move in uh, once it's lived its lifespan because it does get crowded out by some of the other willows due to the fact that it doesn't get as much sun, it doesn't grow as tall. But you see these are from uh, the 2016 planting and they're a little smaller but you can see <laughs> between in the one year to grow from that size you can kind of get an idea here these are growing really well anyway from that size to these larger ones that are taller than me that's one year's difference now what can happen is you can get a really good growing season and so one year a crop can grow really good and the next year it will be kind of stunted so this is all part of the natural process And the beavers have been feeding on these willows, so you got to keep that in mind. Like this one's been fed on, that's why it's so short. And this one over here, it's thick, so I know it's been fed on. Let's just go over and have a peek here. Try and get around where I can get some light. Let's see if I can find any. There's the original cutting. Well, I'll be darned. I just folded that one over and there it is right there, top of the cutting. So uh, apparently these Oh yeah. No, oh, actually this this one's been fortunate, it hasn't been hit. But I know I've checked out some of the other ones upstream and they've been cropped down pretty good, so once they're established uh They've got a good foothold, so from here on in, unless there's some lousy management of the stream and they spray herbicide on the willows and kill them, if that doesn't happen, the riparian recovery program is well under its way. And uh, this is the, this program is titled the Bow Valley Riparian Recovery and Enhancement Program and it involves primarily three streams Nose Creek, West Nose Creek, and Big Hill Creek but I am planting on tributaries and I've planted in the city of Airdrie, city of Calgary and out in the town of Cochrane in this program so it's going really well and this is a perfect way to revive a once healthy trout stream. And it just so happens that probably as the crow flies, I would say approximately 300 meters downstream, the brown trout spawn. I've got video of them spawning and also I, I've got confirmation that the hatch is successful on this creek. Although survival is atrocious on incubating eggs, we're still getting a few that are hatching, and that's a good start. It's going to get nothing but better from here on in if we can uh, stay, stay the course on stream recovery, take care of the water, and don't do anything to destroy any more riparian habitat.